we got new music today. Oh, it is like the perfect day for Dan, our director, to have found us a brand new song. He's, I love the throwback rap that he finds. It's great. The Will Smith yeah, and fine. DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yes. Finally. Fi right, Dan? Well into July. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you were playing Christmas tunes through February, so we're all right. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here with Dr. Linda Ann Smith. You're a breast surgeon. And I, I love am. it when the cancer researchers and cancer folks like yourself come on the show. This is great because it, you guys keep giving me hope that all of my bad habits will be cured someday. <laughs> we're, we're full of hope. Right. Yeah. And there is, there is huge hope right now that things like breast cancer will if not be solved at least, or cured, at least really mitigated, am I right? Well, absolutely. Still early prevention, mammography, early biopsy. The earlier we find tumors, the better the outcome. If we find tumors early, uh, survival can be as high as 90, 95%. That's amazing. Which in our lifetime has changed so much. So that's Even huge. 20, 25 years ago, huge. that was it was almost a death sentence, right? And so much different than the rest of the world. Yes. Where we don't have mammography. Right, right. Has that been the big change in breast cancer research is, is just making sure people get checked up like that? Two big changes. Number one, finding tumors before the cells may have gone into the rest of the body, so mm -hmm. early detection. And then a genetics, so the genetics of the tumor, the genetics mm -hmm. of how we treat it and better technology, better targeted treatment. Yeah, we had some of the folks on from UNMH last week, they were talking about prostate cancer and targeted therapies for that. Is that really the next frontier? Is that really the way that we're gonna see cancers like solved in the next 10, 15 years? We believe so, because um, with imaging, we find a target. Mm -hmm. With um, testing the cancer genetics, we find targeted therapy with medicines mm -hmm. and with radiation. And so the more targeted the treatment is, like using a laser rather than a shotgun. Right. So we're much less likely to have a lot of damage to normal tissue, the brain, All other the other parts. stuff we Every, need. <laughs> we need for quality of life. Right. So we don't want to have someone go through a, a shotgun type treatment and have a terrible quality of life even though they're cured. Absolutely. And you brought a little doohickey. I don't know what this is actually called, but it's pretty cool. You were explaining it to me a little minute. A this little is bit called ago. A, a biosorb, and this is a marker that's used for directing radiation. So when I take out a breast cancer, I, I have to go in deep into the breast, take everything apart, scoop out the tumor, and then reshape everything. Mm -hmm. But the radiation oncologist wants to give the highest treatment, not to all that surrounding tissue, but just to where the tumor was located. Right. So but I tether this, I sew this into the site where the cancer was located. And this is a brand new treatment, right? Brand new right? marker, brand yeah. new marker. And it allows them to see like a beacon where to give the treatment. Uh, so that we don't have to give a lot of high dose treatment except to the tumor bed. Except to that one little area. So it decreases the chance of heart disease, lung disease, rib fractures, shoulder surgery, shoulder all, issues from radiation. All of the stuff that, right. all the side effects right. get reduced. Right. How long has something like this been on the market or available? About two years. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that I'm able to reshape the breast tissue around it uh -huh. so that you can't even see that they've had surgery. Oh, that's very cool. So we're not only getting better treatment, but better quality of life. And better cosmetic results and everything at yeah. the end of that. So how long have you been in practice? And how long have you been studying all of 34 this 34 years. Very 34 cool. years, yeah. And what has been in, this, in those 34 years the biggest change? What has been the biggest thing that you say this, you know, treatment X saved more lives than treatment Y? I mean, what's been the biggest thing you've seen? Women getting involved in their care. Oh. So when I was uh, early in practice, women would go to sleep for a biopsy not knowing if they were going to wake up with a breast or not. Oh. So quality of women's survival has improved dramatically. Mm -hmm. This targeting has, has been the other part of it. Mm -hmm. But women being an advocate that they don't want all their lymph nodes removed. They don't want chemotherapy that may not work. They don't want high dose radiation if directed radiation is gonna be better. Mm -hmm. And how, is that just because people can learn more about all of this Technology, stuff on the Technology, science, and, computers, imaging. All of it makes Mammography it being probably one of the biggest steps. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of controversy about mammography, but it still should probably be done yearly. Mm -hmm. Particularly in New Mexico, we have a very high risk population. The conquistadors brought some very bad cancer genes to New Mexico. Uh, so we have quite a large population of very high risk patients, even as early as 20 or 25. Wow. 
Yeah. Well, that's that's my mom's family right there. <laughs> the um, so, what do you do to mitigate that? I mean, as when as we are young, I mean, how do you make sure that you don't get cancers later on in life? Well, is it, is it healthy living or is it really more genetics? There, it's both. Okay. So we can help bad genetics with healthy living. So the first thing is diet, exercise, especially diet. That's mm -hmm. that's probably the biggest thing. The other part of that is separating out the high-risk families. Mm -hmm. So we see families, we do risk analyses, we do genetic testing. Until recently, only two genes could be tested, the two breast cancer genes that are part of the Sephardic Jewish population that came to New Mexico. Mm -hmm. We are now testing for 47 other genes. Oh, wow. And we are finding other reasons why these giant families have cancer after cancer after cancer. And we're able to do MRIs earlier if they have, say, melanoma gene, we mm -hmm. have them see the melanoma doctors more commonly. If it's tied to colon cancer, we have them see the colon specialist more commonly. We're able to intervene before these diseases become systemic. Is that kind of genetic testing, this was something that some of the other cancer researchers have talked about. I mean, yeah. that's like the grand new frontier, right? Genetics. Some of us are a little worried about it. Like, yeah. it's, you know, do I really want my genetic sequencing out there in the world, right? but at the same time, it can help solve all of these other problems I could have later, right? It is a present to your children, to your nieces, to your nephews, because if a gene is identified, we look at the whole tree. Mm -hmm. If someone does not have that gene, they probably have a normal risk of cancer. If they have the gene, then we go into early prevention mm -hmm. and they have very, very, very high survival. And better quality of life and everything. If we can find a cancer when it's that big, probably, probably no treatment. Oh. You can just remove it and you're done. Well, there's a, or, yeah, yeah, but probably no chemo, <laughs> probably no radiation. Oh. All the things that really compromise long-term quality of life right. can be avoided. Very cool. And in your practice, what's, what are some of the bigger things that you're really paying attention to right now? What are the things that, you know, for a woman who's watching this morning, what do you tell her to do today and to watch just to be on the safe side of things? Well, number one, mammography. Mm -hmm. Number two, breast examination, because mm -hmm. particularly in the very young mm -hmm. who, may, who may not be getting mammography yet, breast examination is still really important. In the elderly where they may not be able to get yearly mammograms, if a lump shows up, we still may be able to treat them with medicine without surgery, so examination is uh -huh. still important. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle. Mm. Even if you have bad genetics, lifestyle makes a huge so difference. So if I just got out and walk my dog once more weekly, I'd help. And eat less. Eat less. Work out more. Do some, but eating, eating and maintaining your health is the big thing. How about like 17 cups of coffee a day? Is that? That's it? probably okay. Okay. Well, awesome. <laughs> then we're healthy here on the morning. <laughs> it's probably good. <laughs> it's not an It is not. We will be back in a couple of minutes with more coffee and Greg Frost. <laughs>